Welcome to the Swim Swam Breakdown. As always, I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, coming to you from Brooklyn, New York. We've got Swim Swam Editor-in-Chief Braden Keith joining us from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we've got Swim Swam Senior International Reporter Loretta Race coming in from Kentucky. How y'all doing? From the French 75 Boutique in downtown Covington, Kentucky. Ish. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks for the plug. If you're if you're in that part of the state, check it out. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's let's get down to business. We're starting today with uh, a hot take. Emirasachi is disputing the DQs, both of his DQs, fifty and hundred breast, fifty and hundred breast from the short course world championships. He's challenging FINA for transparency. Uh, how successful do we think Emra is going to be in this? You know, in this attempt for justice. Well, I, you know, like what's the, the possible outcome? I don't think he's going to get reinstated, right? Like, so the, the outcome is changed for the future. And at a minimum, I think they need to release video footage whenever they call a DQ. And this is something we've been fighting for years. We almost got kicked out of the U.S. Olympic trials in 2016 <laughs> for asking for the footage of Camille Adams's 200 fly DQ that was overturned. So like, so this is part of a bigger issue in swimming where everything's got to be a secret all the time. If you think it's a legit DQ, especially if you're using video replay to confirm or overturn the calls, show us the video. And if not, then change the call. I mean, it, it doesn't seem that hard to me. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Henry also said something like, you know, FINA needs to be more clear cut in their explanation kind of thing. But it's also, I mean, the rule is pretty cut and dry. I mean, it's how you swim the breaststroke and how you do a turn and, you know, what's allowable. So I don't know, honestly, how well out, you know, more spelled out they could put it in, in the rules. So I think the only other alternative is to release the camera footage. I still want to know why there were none called at the Olympics. We talked about that last week Mm -hmm. and I I verbally rolled my eyes as hard as I could verbally roll my (laughs) eyes. But I, it's, I mean, I think that's, that sort of supports his point that like the same system didn't catch anything at the Olympics. You think in the last six months, everybody changed their breaststroke. No, they just didn't call it at the Olympics, which is bogus, but you know, I love the drama. I I tweeted this (laughs) earlier and, and like arguing over officiating is America's favorite pastime for sure. And I know the rest of the world loves it too. So like release the footage and you get a second round of people arguing over the call, which is great for, for the meets. You- I mean, our, our most viewed ISL articles of the entire season were the articles about Lily King's DQ and it wasn't that close. Hmm. 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 Well, I think that was the point swing. I, that that carried a little bit more weight than, you know, one individual swimmer that had no team momentum, you know. But people also just like to argue. True. You can you know. endlessly <laughs> about officiating. <laughs> Never That's ends. why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of which, uh, we saw a lot of fast 75s last week. I posted a 75 that I filmed of Dean Ferris. He swam it with fins as part of a relay at one of their practices. I mean, Braden, I know I told you about this two months ago when I captured it. We put it up and people seem to like it because then we, they sent us lots more videos of everyone else doing 75s. It was awesome. It was, it was, I think it made that week, which is typically a slower week for swim swim, a lot more fun and enjoyable and assumably gave people something to do during their Christmas training and maybe a little something to look forward to. But there were some uh, discrepancies about some of the coaches' watch times, which was personally my favorite part. Do you remember? Yeah, it's, it's like more arguing about officiating, right? Do you remember what I told you two months ago when you told me about this? Yeah, I told you what happened and you were like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I still don't know what that means. I guess my favorite part about it going kind of viral is that I know a little bit more about what it means now. Like, I know it was a pretty good time, but it wasn't like melt your face off because other swimmers were able to go a little bit faster. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's so stupid, but I love it. I, why can't we have fun with swimming, right? Like, 
The NBA has a dunk contest. We have 75 with fins. I, I, whatever. It's or fun. without fins. Ryan Held did it without fins. He was sub 30. Yeah, but okay. he, he had the advantage of a, of a very quick watch. So say you. <laughs> what's, what's, worth, what's worth more, a, a fast watch or fins? That's a great point. Uh, okay. Fins. <laughs> A great, great point. Uh, yeah. We're, yeah. Uh, had had to throw that out there, but I yeah, again, the best. So if you that. guys could see if you guys could see any swimmer in their prime fully tapered 75 with fins, who would it be? Amen Sullivan, Australia. Ooh. That's a great, great answer. Ooh. Yeah, that Coleman. <laughs> Coleman. Um Renomi. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd, I'd pick Renomi. She, the, yeah, that's, that's who I'd see. <laughs> What's your I, last name, Coleman? <laughs> Renomi Chroma Yo Yo. No, you pronounce. Uh, don't you pronounce the first J, but not the second one? Who's to say? Chroma Yo Yo. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yo Yo. Another episode of Swim Swam I, tries to I've pronounce. Never it. heard that pronunciation. Wow. Oh. Rowdy. Okay, um, I. I would want to see, I think Caesar when he was like good at the 50 and the hundred. Um, and, and he was so good in long course. He was so good in short course. Um, like, you know, you could say Dressel or Vlad, but I don't, I just don't know that it would be as much of an advantage because they're so good off the start. And if we're going with the original, you know, the, what it became was from a push, right? Like that was the thing. Mm -hmm. And so like the, they lose the start and there, you can still only go kind of 15 meters underwater. So I don't know how much of a difference it would make for those guys, but I would love to see Caesar do it. Well, Matt, there was one dude was it Tennessee or some college dude did a farmer carry with like huge weights. Yes. Yes. Virginia. And I was like, yes, that's something I can do. That needs to be a thing. An <laughs> out of the pool thing. Yes. That was Matt instead of Virginia. Todd DeSorbo posted it. So I'm I'm go I, I'm going to Virginia in a couple weeks to film yes. practices. And Todd, when I emailed him, was like, hey, can I come down? He's like, yeah, come on down. We'll do 75s fast with socks. Yes. <laughs> Like, that's what i you know look i know i know people whine about us giving virginia too much attention but there's a reason they get so much attention and it's because they'll do anything right. they will answer anything mm -hmm. they will they're just they're the most open program in the world and and if you say like farmers carries and french toast they'll be like yes coleman we are <laughs> filming farmers carries and french toast this week <laughs> It's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, it is. And 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 you're right. Yeah. They'll they'll just do whatever. Yeah. They're cool about it and they do it with pizzazz. Yeah. Uh, hey, behind oh. the site scenes info for anybody who doesn't know, Coleman doesn't actually like pancakes anymore. I I saw him film a pancakes oh, from man. practice and pancakes and he had a bite and a half. Um and I'm convinced that he doesn't actually like pancakes. Oh god. Braden, you're leaving out Big the cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls or part of this, which was that that was literally a red velvet cake that they said <laughs> was pancakes. It was an entire cake. I guess we were raised different, Coleman, because you ordered it and you should have eaten it. <laughs> raised different. <laughs> Total swimming quote now. <laughs> I'll make you some whole wheat, like GMO. No, pancakes. gross. <laughs> gross. I don't know what that means, but I don't like it. Loretta, I do hope I go somewhere soon with cinnamon rolls because that would be a great. What about cinnamon roll pancakes? That's a thing. Okay. Where was Is I? It? I was that somewhere. I oh, I was in Houston two weeks ago, and every restaurant we went to had cinnamon roll pancakes. That sounds like such a Houston thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, I want to get back to swimming because you guys oh. have an interesting point of swimming. Cesar and Eamon. What if you did it with a full body suit? Oh, and full body suit <laughs> and fence. There's, I would bet that 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 they wouldn't be capable of coming up before 15 meters. Like there would be so much momentum from a dive that they just have to belly flop or there would be no way for them to get back to the surface by 15 meters. I don't even think there'd be any suit left. I think it would be like singed like <laughs> off their bodies. You know what I mean? 
honestly. So I think they would have to like peel it off afterwards. It would be so hot. So yeah. I mean, yeah, you win. you would like that, wouldn't you, Loretta? Yeah, sign it, sign me up. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> they went from a start like they would definitely have to adjust the start so that you're going out as far as you can and then just like dipping into the <laughs> skip <laughs> just in the water exactly I, but like i'm trying to think we're of having too much fun let's rein it in guys i'm trying to think of the limit of like how fast you could go in that and it's like we don't know yet like 24 uh, yeah, I was thinking like 21, but that's probably no. <laughs> I don't think 20. I think I think you can get into the 24s yeah. in perfect circumstances. Like tapered. Eight seconds to 25. Yeah, yeah because what Caleb can do a nine low or an eight high in a 25 off a start. One of my favorite right? parts, yeah. One of my favorite parts of Ryan Held's 75 was people were just like, uh, Remmel went faster than that in his 75 of his 100. It's like, okay. <laughs> but like, that's like a completely different circumstance, but that is still yeah. right. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to talk about something else besides 75s. We got, we, we've got movement. We've got non-movement. A lot of a lot of pro swimmers announced stuff yeah. this week. First, First of all, Shane Costa <clears throat> is finally going to Austin. Um, he he posted a very nice Instagram thing, uh, you know, thanking Texas A and M for his time there. So it seems like he left on good terms. Whereas maybe before it was a little more of a surprise or a little more of like a ooh. But uh, it seemed like things were going well from there. He's coming off a world title multiple world titles I'm pretty sure multiple relay in an individual yeah. yeah um so so what do you think now that he's finally going to austin you know it's an it's an interesting question because on the surface you want to say yeah i mean he's going to train with eddie reese and the texas guys how can that be a bad thing um there are a lot more distractions in austin than there are in college station and we know that he had some distractions in the lead up to the olympic trials so i'm curious to see how he handles that um, and you know, again, as we know, Eddie's trying to retire. Um, so we don't know if Eddie's going to be there and we don't know what life after Eddie looks like. So it's, it's a little bit of a gamble in that sense. Um, I, I, I was a little surprised that given his success at short course worlds, he didn't decide to stick it out at A&M at least till worlds and then make the change when he had a full year. But, you know, I think he's, I think he's close with the Texas guys on a personal level it's not that big of a move, you know, it's two hours away. He's still pretty close to home. So if he's going to make this move, I think it's a, a fairly easy transition. Eddie will, will be there through worlds in whatever capacity, you know, who knows who's, who's actually going to be running the pro group. Now I don't, I'm not even sure who's still in the pro group. Um, but, you know, I think, I think it's fine. Like, I don't think, what a and is doing and what Texas are, is doing is so drastically different that it's going to matter, um, that it's going to be like this, this big transition for him. So I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. I think it creates a really interesting storyline. I mean, for me, it just seems like it's not that much time between arriving at Texas and then worlds, basically your world trials. So it just, you know, it doesn't give him that much time to adapt to a potentially different program. And like you said, Braden, it might not be that much different, but bottom line, different coach, different location, different training mates. So there is, you know, variables. So I just, you know, it, he was, he obviously did well at a and world short course. I don't know. You know, what's, what I think is, is interesting here that we haven't really discussed in this move is that a m is a program on the rise and they've got some very good recruits coming in, but as it sits right now, um, Shane is the biggest fish in that pond, right? Like he is the guy and, and, you know, from talking to people around the AM program, they have some swimmers who are not as fast, who, who do have some leadership skills that have, you know, worked on that program and, and, and fixed in doing some things with the culture in that program but he's going from a place where he could do what he wanted to do to a place where I don't know if he'd, if he'd be allowed to stick around if he didn't fit, if he didn't tow the company line, so to speak. There's a lot of big fish in the Texas pond. There's a Drew Kibler and Danny Kruger and 
whoever else is, I don't know who else is there. Um, Coleman probably knows who else is there, but like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of big names there. There's a lot of big egos there. There's a lot of big boys there. You know, it's a, it's just going to be a whole different thing. So even though I, he knows those guys doing it day in and day out could be good, could be bad. It could give him a lot of driving in competition and practice. It could break him, but you know, I, good for him for finding out, right? Like he's going to go and he's going to find out if he can handle that environment. Well, and I think that touches on the point that he made to where it was like, again, this time he's leaving Texas A&M. He, he's like, I'm really grateful for everything they did for me. Um, I obviously got really good here, but now it's time for me to try something else. I want to see how much better I can get over at this place because it's always, I think it's good to change things up. You know, I, especially post Olympic year, you see lots of people make lots of different moves mm-hmm. because they want something new. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But so. I would have, I would have loved to have seen him and Baylor Nelson train IMs together. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. Yeah, maybe he'll he'll make a guest appearance uh, yeah. once Baylor gets there. That that would be awesome to see. Uh, and speaking of more pros making more moves, um, Natalie Hines kind of officially announced that she's back at Florida, where she did her undergrad, where she swam for four years under Greg Troy. Uh, she went to train at Georgia once she made her comeback in 2018. Um, and the, now she's after her first Olympics, first Olympic medal, she's going back to train with Nesty, Ledecky, Dressel, like, yeah, every, everyone who's there, right? Um, <laughs> what do we think of this move for Natalie? I think it's I think it's a very interesting move. Um, I think people are making too much out of the Georgia Exodus because a lot of it is just happens to be the age of the swimmers is an age where a lot of swimmers change their training, especially if they've been there for a long time. Um, you know, it's, it's Greg Troy, isn't the head coach there anymore. And it seems like he's probably more or less stepping off deck for good with, with Caleb announcing that he's back working with Nesty and young Bliss and those guys. It's a lot of the same staff as when she was an undergrad though. So that makes the transition easier. Um, I, I would, you know, I'd be curious to hear her talk about what Gainesville offers that Athens doesn't, you know, if she moved to somewhere like Texas, that would make sense to me closer to home, bigger city. Um, Gainesville is very much another college town. She's going to be training with a lot of college swimmers out of a a college program. And, And, you know, she's kind of in this, in a similar ecosystem. I don't think Georgia and Florida are doing that much different in training. Um, I, you know, I, who's she training with at Florida? There's, I don't know. I can't think of anybody who's on her level in women's sprinting. Obviously Caleb is going to be there. So it's an interesting choice. I'd love to hear her break down why Florida, other than just the familiarity of it, having swum there in college. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting move. It's not one I would have guessed for a swimmer who retired and came back to swimming, somebody who retires and comes back to swimming, it would seem to me as though there was some appeal of this world outside of swimming. But if you're living in Gainesville and training, you're very much in a a swimming bubble. So I don't know. Yeah. For me, it's kind of not the same as Casas, but so he, he acquired his medals while he was at A&M and same with, you know, Heinz, you know, training at Georgia. So she was an Olympian she got a medal and now she's making moves. So it's, it, it is interesting. It's almost like, do they have this confidence that they feel like they can carry that into a new program or, or I don't know. I don't, I, I really don't know, but I feel like it's almost a parallel kind of situation. Do you think there's benefit to being in the, you know, Florida obviously has a ton of momentum with Bobby Fink and Caleb Dressel and Katie Ledecky, even if, if she's, not doing the same sets that they are on the same intervals. Is there an advantage to like being in the aura of so many, you know, that's three of the world's five best swimmers Mm -hmm. right now in one place. Yeah. I I think there's definitely like, like by association kind of like aura going on. I do. So I think that it is part of the attraction, but I think it's also the fact that she is going to carry that confidence from getting the gold or uh, getting the, the medal in Tokyo and then carrying that into Florida. I think that is key, knowing that she has that kind of resume behind her, whereas before she didn't, she was almost 
like an up and comer and now she has arrived. Yeah. It feels a little like Katie DeLuf when she went to Virginia, you know, kind of a pro that's doing okay, but is, <laughs> is sort of at a point where they got to make the jump or they're going to be pushed out by younger swimmers. Mm-hmm. And she went to Virginia and it, it worked out for her. It was, it went well for her. Um, and Virginia was the hot handed program and now Florida is the hot handed program. So mm-hmm. maybe, maybe that makes it a, a good decision. I, you know, people probably underrate that part of swimming, just the emotion and the energy and the positivity of everybody doing well and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to, you know, there's a side narrative of a black swimmer with a black coach that is very interesting given the lack of racial diversity in this country in swimming. Um, I think that that could be a big national news story and outside of swimming news story. If it, if it comes true, if she has success. Um, and I think that would be a good thing for swimming on that level. Uh, yeah, I agree that that, that like a bigger part of that is, would be my guess for what drew her there is like, you know, she swam there and Greg Troy was the head coach. And so I'm sure that was like a certain culture, a certain kind of team. Um, so she left, she went to Georgia. I mean, Georgia was also, when she came back, she was working in Atlanta at for Turner broadcasting. And so that was like very close. She could, I think she was still working for Turner when she made her comeback um, for a while. And so that was kind of like, that kind of worked out, but now it's, Braden, you said it there, the staff is similar, but I'm guessing it's probably a pretty new culture with Nessie at the helm. Um, And so that having her having the familiarity of Florida Gainesville, um, I'm guessing she probably had some good memories there, but also, you know, it being a new environment, it being a totally new team with all the pros that we mentioned there, like, you know, and, and with a lot of the pros leaving Georgia, not that that's a bad thing, but you know, her, her pro group certainly got smaller. She's like, okay, well maybe I'll go to this growing pro group now. So I feel like it's a good move. I feel like she's probably going to do well wherever. Um, after discussing it, I, I think it is a good move too. I think I agree <laughs> with that after, after we've talked through it, it's a good move. <laughs> I wasn't sure when we started talking, but I, I've, I've decided that I think it's a good move. Way to go, Natalie. <laughs> uh, so one one person who will be not moving, uh, at least not immediately, Carol Ostrowski from Drury. We saw a practice with him where he threw down some really speedy 25s earlier in the year. He, he was kind enough to throw us a 75 with fins where he went. Uh, I think he tied Brooks Curry's time. But you know, 18 in the 50 free, 41 low, 41, one, 41, two in the hundred free. I mean, this dude's crazy fast. He swims for Drury, um, which is a D two school. And he's, he had entered the transfer portal. Now he is out of the transfer portal. He's sticking with Drury for this year, going to compete for them at NCAAs. And then his goal is to transfer, uh, next year. What do we think of this move for Carol? Uh, you know, I think, I think, if you're a D2 swim fan, you got to like it because it, it brings tons and tons of excitement to D2 swimming. Um, he's He's got to be the best male transfer of at least a generation. Um, I can't say ever because I think it, it used to be more common for superstars to transfer, but, you know, of a generation, he's the best male transfer there. Um, and, you know, between, between going to the Olympics last summer and the challenges of COVID, I guess – it's better for him to save for the summer to, to go through the transfer process and do his visits and figure that out. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to think about it. You know, he's going to go to NCAAs and he's going to win the 50 and the hundred and he'll score a lot of points in the hundred back. And I don't, he, he said he wants to help Drury win a national title. I'm not sure that's in the cards for them this year. I don't think they're deep enough to beat Queens and UND. Um, but with him, they, they could make a run at it with him. Um, so good, good for him. You know, I, he needs to be in D one swimming, right? Like that's in, in 18, nine in D two swimming is the same as a 19, five in D two swimming most years it's going to win. So it's, it's, you know, I, I think 
it's fun to see that D2 schools can also turn out fast swimmers. He had a really good swim at the Olympics on the relay. So that's like a good message, but I, I am supportive of his thought that he said, I want to race the best at, and in the country and to do that, he's got to go D one. So I hope he does wind up at, at D one eventually, um, where he winds up. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting if he, if he went back to Florida state, which is where he committed originally. Um, and they do a nice job with sprinters. So that, that makes sense to me. Um, but he hasn't kind of told us where else he's looking, but that'll be a big flurry of activity in the off season. I think lots of coaches are just waiting for him to go back in so they can start calling again. What year is he? We don't know. It's unclear because <laughs> D2 rules are different than D1 rules and okay. <sighs> unclear. Yeah, I, would, I, would okay. be, I mean, I think he's, he's at least 23, 23, yeah. 24, uh, I want to say. Okay. So he's a freshman. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> well, and so I'm, I will be also interested to see in just um, how many years of eligibility he would get in D1 if, if he goes that route. <clears throat> maybe one, maybe two, but, you know, it'd still be worth it for any school to get one or two years with, yeah, the 41 low, 18, 50 free. Um, mm. But yeah, literally it'll be interesting. I'm like Braden said, I'm, I'm stoked to see him compete in D2 this year, just because it is cool to see D2 schools turn out really good athletes that are D1 caliber athletes as well. Um, to, to, to make that, much more viable location, not only for those top athletes, but, you know, to, to get the, to, to make D2 swimming more visible for all athletes in international news, Loretta, we're throwing this one to you. Uh, Rikako Iki in Japan had a great new year's meet. I think she won multiple events, uh, at this meet. Um, what do we think this says about her moving forward, especially into this coming year? Yeah. So she's, she's 21. Okay. And she's basically a full year removed from the hospital, which is still only one year. Okay. So the fact that she's competing is just phenomenal. It's kind of akin to Showstrom with her elbow. I mean, these people are just otherworldly type athletes. Um, and she, so I key won the 200 free, 100, uh, 100 free at this new year's Tokyo Metro meet domestic. And she did surpass the times that she had set as kind of goals ahead of the meet. So she did better than she thought she was going to do. Um, they weren't anything groundbreaking. They were like, you know, several seconds off her personal best. However, it's just kind of a new 2021, you know, launch to Paris 2024 kind of attitude and kind of approach. So I feel like this is just kind of a springboard for things to come for her. And I think that, you know, Physically, she's gaining a lot of muscle. She's gaining a lot of strength. I feel like she's doing, she's taking on these 200s, whereas before she was only doing the 50s and the 100s. So now that she's doing like the 200 free, that's a good sign that she feels like she's physically capable of doing that. So I, I do think we'll see good things to come from her. Um, maybe not this year. It's still a little bit early, but I'm thinking, you know, 2023 is, is she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. 22 is a home world championships. So if they can get fans in there, you know, the fans will be going absolutely berserk mm -hmm. every time she steps on the blocks. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hope she of like, are, can she go best times this year? <clears throat> I think that's a lot of, I think that's positive thinking. I don't think it's impossible. I don't think it's likely because she was so freaking fast. <laughs> Yeah, You know, and a lot of her times were like when she was like 18, 19 years old and now she's 21 and she, you know, was kind of out of, you know, the pool the entire 2019. So I think it's possible, but I don't think it's, I think it's, like I said, I think it's still more 2023 is going to be more her breakout year. I think she can get back to times, you know, she can go 56 high in the 100 fly. Like she can get back to times that show us that best times are possible this year. Mm -hmm. Like that she, yeah. you know, cleans up this or that or whatever. Um, I think best times are probably a long shot. I'd love to see her in the ISL. Didn't it feel mm -hmm. like when she was peaking that, that she had that kind of 
okay, I can swim a 50, then I can get out and 20 minutes later, I can swim a hundred mm-hmm. and I can do them all fast and I can do them in short course. I, I think she'd be amazing in the ISL. Absolutely. And, and if assuming she swam for Tokyo, if she did swim for Tokyo, if Dave Salo remembered to draft her, I'm sure he wouldn't have to, I'm sure she would be assigned to the Tokyo team. <laughs> then that would be a huge boost for them as well, which again, we, we need as much parity as we can get yeah. with that one. Yes. Um, all right. And with that, I think it's time to play a little sink or swim. First up on sink or swim today, swim necks predicts there will be 10 count them 10 world records at the Paris 2024 Olympic games for reference. There was six world records broken in Tokyo. Braden, Take us through it. What do we think about these world record predictions from swim next? I'm, I'm swimming the 10. So on totality, I think we've seen, we, we ran the data at some point and six was an unusually low number. So 10 is not out of the ordinary. Um, and I think suits will be better. And without the COVID complica- complications, I don't think 10 is unreasonable. So let's, let's run through them one at a time. Uh, men's 100 fly 4932, Caleb's world record. I'm swimming that. I think Caleb's got one more tenth in him. And if not him, then I think Malak is going to do it. Yeah, I can swim that one. I, I totally agree. It's not that far of a stretch. Okay. Men's 800 free relay. Yeah, I, I don't think that. I think I think we're going to see a lot more guys going 144s and even 143s in Paris. So um, averaging, what does that take? 144 <laughs> mids on rolling starts. Mm-hmm. I think that's doable. Mm-hmm. Um, men's 400 medley relay. I'm swimming that one because the U S broke it with maybe some soft legs. So that's probably breakable. Um, mixed, just skip the relays. The relays are all going to go down. It's all yeah, the end of mixed the relays oh, are right. easy records. All right. Uh, <laughs> women's hundred free 51, six. We've seen so many fast women in the last few years. None of them yeah. have hit those <laughs> times at the Olympics. So I think I'm sinking that one just based on the timing. I agree with you, actually. Yeah, I'm sinking that one as well. I think it's just the fact that the Olympics is just a different animal. And I think that in Australia, we saw whatever, four or five people go 52 low. No one got into that realm. And, and I feel like even at the Olympics, it's just what it takes to get to, uh, to the podium. And I, I don't know. I'm still thinking it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm swimming that one. Uh, that one's a lot more believable with, to me, especially because of how fast the Australian women have been. Emma McKeon won this year with a 51, nine Siobhan was 52, two. <clears throat> I mean, I think the women's hundred free is getting really fast, uh, especially with a lot of young talent. So I swim that one 51, six. Fair yeah. enough. There's, you know, there's some young talent in that event, so I could see it. I'm still sinking it. Um, women's 200 free 152 eight. That's interesting. I, I think if, um, if that happens, I don't think it's going to be Titmus or Ledecky or Simone or whoever else. I think it's going to be somebody that that's not in the picture yet. Okay. Like who? Uh, <laughs> one of I mean, the Australians. Titmus, okay, Titmus won, oh, no, 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 no. Titmus won gold. Okay, Titmus won gold. She was what 153.0. Okay. So she's in that in itself was like almost an otherworldly time. No one had been that close to Kelly Greeny's world record in a very long time. And she's still only 21 years old. So who the heck, you know, do you think is gonna come up in between now and Paris? I think another Australian. I think the Australians have figured out how to train the 200 free the way that. <laughs> that Jack Bowerly used to train the 200 free. And I, th- I think 200 frees go in waves where if you figure it out, it goes, your, your, your whole group goes crazy. And oh. I think an Australian woman will do it if anybody does it. I think we, what could be interesting if uh, Tori Husk gets into the 200 free more, we've seen her mostly finish, focus on the, the sprint freeze in the hundred fly at the international level, but she is a very good 200 freestyler. So I think she maybe has the potential to get down there. 
Um, Agreed. She, I, she was like entered in it at Short Course Worlds and then scratched. I was really bummed about that, but a yeah. lot of people were scratching a lot of events. So it's like, so hopefully we could see that out of her soon. That would be really exciting. Yeah. Agreed. Next so what else do we have? Uh, women's hundred back. That's been broken so many times. I think that's a pretty easy swim. Yeah. Um, women's hundred fly. This one's interesting. I can see the world record being broken, but they're saying that it will take a world record, a sub world record time to medal 55, three, seven. I don't know if I see that. I could see it being sub 56 to medal. What did it take in Tokyo mm-hmm. to medal? Um, yeah. So I, I think that's, it that didn't medal which was Tori. Right. Um, so I think, I don't know. I don't know. If there, I just think that's too much to expect to be that hot at the same race. That would be one heck of a race if it took sub 55.3 or sub 55.4 to medal. Yeah, that's not happening. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw yeah, that I, kind of a race at this Olympics, right, where it was within two tenths from mm-hmm. first to fourth but no one broke a world record, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't think both things are going to happen. It could be a great right. race. And it well, you kind of need some clean water to go that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 55-1, that, the only, that's their prediction. Yeah. It's like... The only way I see that is if Claire and Tori training together at Stanford catch some magic. Um, maybe... I. It's almost like they have to, like get along but not get along to and get nasty at every meet and every practice and they somehow drive each other to it and maybe maggie mcneil transfers to stanford for her her bonus year next year she's in the transfer portal and the three of them train together through the olympics and the greatest training group that the world has ever seen seems like you've put a lot of thought into this no i, yeah, we, I no, no, literally no. just made this up we were talking about Rikako. Okay, Japan. We're talking Paris 2024. That's one of her prime events. I'm not saying she'll get sub 55.9. You know, I mean, it should be, I don't know. I'm just saying don't count her out by the time that comes around, which is not that far off, but enough time for her to get back into the groove of things. So I want to talk about two races where I think they've definitely pegged slow. And it's the men's hundred free and the men's two hundred free, which are mm. I, I they're 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 going to be I think by Paris with Pop, Popovich and um, Huang from South Korea I think are going to be more of an overlapping field than we've seen recently in the hundred and two hundred free, but forty seven two seems slow to me with all of the the young the super young talent we have in the hundred free, um, and like I said I think I think this is going to be the quad or the try or whatever we're calling it <laughs> where we start seeing 143s again in the 200 free See, we've been saying that though That's oh my gosh we've been saying that for well, like it's gotta happen eventually we, we we still have been saying that and it's still has not been happening how yeah. many guys I'm have sorry, been, but- how many guys have been um sub 144 in the 200 free like one no <laughs> like five maybe <laughs> phelps lochte <laughs> Yannick, the German. Don't say that name. I mean, seriously, it's it's. I know what you're uh, saying, Brayden, but but oh, it's. And I think a Russian guy, um, maybe Loban, Daniel. Uh, oh, this is the That's what I'm talking about. We've been in the same 200 free zone for like the past like five. But this years. could be the golden generation with Sates and Wong and Popovich. Um, those, that is the group, by the way, it's, it's, oh, Biederman, uh, Lochte has not done it. Biederman has, um, Lochte's best is 144.4, which so is you're surprising saying to me. Four guys have been under one. Yes. yes. So it's coming. I, I think, I think <laughs> Sate's training at Georgia, um, what he's done training in South Africa. And then if he goes to Georgia where they know how to train 200 freestylers, it's like what they do better than anything they've ever, that anybody has ever done is train oh, 200 bad. freestylers. What is Sate's long course best time though? I, I think it's like a 147. Yeah, but he's been swimming short course. <laughs> so you got Sate's, you got Wong, you got Popovich. Rapsis is still very young. Tom Dean is not going anywhere. I think we're going to see one. 
I think we're going to see multiple 143s in Paris. Nope. Kieran Smith, I'm I don't think, think, think has, has topped I'm out. I'm thinking Braden's whatever think he just Smith did. I'm thinking that. Out? I think it has not topped out. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't, I, I think 144.0 to win gold is fair. Yes. I, I like I think it, I think you saying 143 will win gold is also fair. I sink 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 multiple 143s in I am swimming multiple in, 143s in Paris. But. You can call me out on it in Okay, it is August really of 2024. That their 100 for the men's 100 free what it takes to medal and the champion time both are slower than Tokyo. They are saying 47.5 to medal and 47.2 to win, but it was 47.4 to medal and 47.0 to win in Tokyo. Ooh. So if Chalmers can figure out how to get healthy one. between now and then, he's a 46.9. Caleb, I think if Caleb is, stays focused till Paris, he's a 46.9. Well, Why wouldn't he stay focused? I don't know. People win gold medals, <laughs> make a lot of money, and they get distracted. It happens. Yeah. You've seen it before. Lose, you have to lose motivation eventually, right? I feel like Chalmers, though. Too, yeah, Michael Phelps never got distracted. I feel like Chalmers gets faster with every, like, cyborg operation he has, though. So I think he's, yeah, I, Chalmers, I don't know, man. Chalmers also has, like, all the motivation, right? Like, he's he's still a hunter. Out. Yeah, he's the hunter, even though he was the Olympic champion in 16 it's, it's he still mm-hmm. feels like second fiddle right uh, mm-hmm. whereas dressel mm-hmm. it's like he's done it all at this point besides mm-hmm. the world records i guess so maybe that's maybe he'll stay driven in that way loretta it almost sounds like you're off your boy popovich after after he let you down at short course worlds when you put okay, he, no. huge expectations on him and i was oh, right okay. short course is I don't want to say it doesn't count, but it's like not as quite as important as long than. Point. But are you what? off him? Are you no. off him for the Olympics? I mean, it doesn't, no. you don't seem to have a lot of confidence that he can continue his trajectory. Not at all. No, I'm absolutely full Popovich. I feel He's I not did. 143 positive. No. But that's, that's the same with any seasoned Dean Scott. Anyone else? I, I don't think a 143 is just going to happen. Sure. All right. Yeah. We're, we're moving on. I don't know if that was a sink or a swim. I, <laughs> I, I overall just give it a swim because that was good fun. Jack Hoagland, Notre Dame. Uh, we reported a couple different things. Um, we talked to him. He said he's coming back. Um, he, he, he had an elbow injury. He's rehabbing from it. He's been training now since Thanksgiving. Wrist injury. Sorry, wrist injury. And now he is on the fence about redshirting. Uh, sink or swim, do we think Jack Hoagland will redshirt this season? I'm swimming it. Um, you know, Notre Dame is, is in kind of a weird year. They don't really have a head coach per se. Um, I, I think, I think he'll make better use of that year of eligibility at the end of his career than he will this year between the, the late comeback to training, the, the injury took longer to heal from than he thought and just where the team is at. I'm sure some of his teammates would be disappointed because he is their top scorer. He's their best swimmer. Um, but I'm swimming him red shirting. Cause I just, I just think it's better use of his abilities at the end of his career than it is now. Go Braden. I'm, I'm just deferring to him. I don't even know this dude. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to swim it as well. Uh, I, I think it just makes sense at this point. Like I, we've seen people come back to, to race for a semester and I guess racing in the fall semester doesn't like actually count because conference and NCAAs are like the thing that people look back on the most. But I, I do think that if he's only been training since Thanksgiving, it, it just makes more sense to red shirt. And like Braden said, save his abilities for down the road. We're closing with our favorite 75 of the week. Braden, I want to start with you. What was the best 75 you saw? My favorite was Yusuf Ramadan's. I think that the most disappointing thing that happened in swimming in 2021 was him false starting at NCAAs and not getting a chance to 
see what he could do at the NCAA championships. Um, and that time he went, what do you go? He went 28, four swimming butterfly. And that, that to me, like, I'm not sure what the freestyle times mean, but I, after seeing the freestyle times, I'm pretty sure that 28 four is really, really impressive. So that was my favorite. Loretta. Yeah, I'm doing Ryan Held sends fins. I think he was sub 30, 29, whatever. Okay. Coach fast time. Ryan okay. Held didn't what? play the game because he didn't wear fins. He dove off uh, the block. His coach started the watch late. That's my you least. You just hate me. All right, go on, Colvin. Next one. My <laughs> least favorite 75. Uh, I play the game. The game has rules. Play by the rules. Did did we learn nothing from Squid Games? <laughs> Ryan Held would have been eliminated in the first week of Squid. Games. My favorite was Dean Ferris, definitely because uh, because because it's Dean Ferris. Because it's Dean <laughs> Ferris. I love Dean Ferris. I love the legend that is Dean Ferris, and uh, and it started it started the whole chain reaction. Also, my I mean, again, my favorite part of the whole thing was was people arguing about the semantics of stopwatches it was really surprising mm. to me that people were like oh you can't start the watch when they when at the feet but like that's mm. like the only way i've ever coached <laughs> like that's how i was taught to do it like every time you send a swimmer off you start the watch at the feet not when you say go because i'm kind of disappointed that nobody used a mono fin and just went oh, yeah. not all fins are created equal and there was not as much drama about fin style as i as i thought there might be but there was some mm -hmm. people were still commenting like i would see comments being like oh his fins are pretty short never mind this is legit <laughs> mm -hmm. uh and also in yusuf's case i love i loved that one because he did flip turns and everyone freaked out about that <laughs> <laughs> he did fully legal flip turns i hope he does that at ncaa's that would be amazing that would be amazing <laughs> all right that's the 75s. And this is the Swim Swim Breakdown. Tune in next week for your week's news and swimming.